All right, so I'm going to walk you through how to build uh, a machine, a CNC machine with Linux CNC. It's kind of the basic overview, nothing really complex. I'm going to go through a few things here in a moment I'll show you. But first I have to uh, mention a disclaimer. If you fry any of your fairly expensive equipment while doing this, I cannot be held responsible. Those things come with user manuals for a reason. So yeah. I'm just going to clear some things up, show you a few things, you know. Now, I do have to mention that as far as qualifications go, I have retrofit a CNC mill, an analog machine, and I'm now currently working on retrofitting a uh, manual lathe to Linux CNC. Um, that one will be digital. So without further ado, let's jump into it. I'm going to put timestamps here um, on each one of these. So you can skip to whichever part you're interested in. I'm just kind of shotgunning the whole thing and giving a little bit of information, a little bit of diagrams. So uh, analog servo motors, those are your older machines. We'll have those. Um, they're okay. They're not the greatest. Their holding power is less than you know, a digital motor. Uh, then I'll go over digital motors. Um, in particular, I would suggest if you went with the digital motor, I would go with... Um, clear pass motors they're just they work they seem to work the best they have the best reputation everybody talks about them they're just you know they're out there uh then digital stepper motors so the you know the old classic everybody seems to use these everybody used them i was never a fan of them and i'll get into why um then servo slash stepper motors with a closed loop these are actually your uh clear path um yeah, your clear path motors are closed loop. And I'll get into what those are exactly. Um, now, I have to mention, I'm going to show a diagram of the digital uh, servo motor, but I've never really set up. I know Pigo makes a board for them. I've never really used them. Um, the only ones I would ever kind of used is the, uh, the closed loop, which I suggest uh, just because I've never really used a, um, an open loop digital servo motor. So anyways, uh, there are three parts to the machine. There's the machine itself, which, you know, if you're watching this video, I'm assuming you're going to purchase or build yourself. Uh, I would suggest purchasing. You'll just get a way more rigid machine. I know you can epoxy granite and go through that. And, you know, it's cool and it's a novel idea. And I wouldn't mind doing that myself. It's just way faster to, you know, get around that and go straight to, uh, you know, working on a machine. Then you have the electronics. That's the second part of the machine. This is your stuff that you'd find in an electrical cabinet, you know, all that kind of fun stuff. Um, then you have the software, which is Linux CNC. You know, there's a variety of softwares. Uh, I think Mesa makes a, a controller, a standalone controller. Then you have Mach, Mach 3 and Mach 4 that work on this. We're going to be working in Linux. So, here you have a diagram of your analog servo motor. Now these are the ones I know the best. Um, so I, I, I'm the strongest in the analog field because I've worked with analog before. Uh, so up here we have just a legend telling you what line means what. So you have analog, digital out, digital in, low DC voltage. I'm, I'm referring to low DC voltage as 12 a 5 or 12 volt DC, and then DC uh, power DC. This is what the motor is actually going to run on. So if you start here, this is the out for the diagram. We have the Linux CNC controller itself, and that's going to go to your card of choice. I have a MESA card here, which uh, I believe it's the I77, uh, 7i77 for analog. And that's not including the board that plugs into your um, your computer itself directly to the motherboard. And then, so that is going to go over to the servo driver and communicate with that analog to the servo driver itself. So, in actuality, this would be a digital code, and then the master card would be converting it over to analog. There's a little typo right there. And then that analog code is taken to the servo drivers, and then the servo drivers takes the power and moves it directly where you want it to go. Um, the DC volt, DC voltage low is going to your MESA, 
Nessa card, I can never say that right, and then going to your encoder and then supplying your encoder with power. And then for the input, the uh, Linux CNC controller is getting its input directly from the encoder as it comes up and into the Maso card. And then that Maso card would go to the Maso card inside the controller itself. If you're not aware, there are two separate Maso cards that you need. You need the, um, I think I have a 5i25 inside the computer and that plugs directly into the uh, express port on the motherboard of most computers. You can get either a compact or full size 16 pin one. Um, and I do know that they make um, an ethernet one. So you have an ethernet board that would come out and then you'd, it'd break out to, and go from that to a parallel port and then plug into the MasterCard we're talking about here. Uh, you can look at it. I'm gonna link it down in the below. Uh, I think they're plug and go cards that I'm gonna link. But anyways, you can look at that card in particular. So this is for an analog setup. These are the ones I know the best. It's getting direct positional feedback from your encoder at all times. So this is a huge advantage of this type of a system where it's, you know, getting direct feedback all the, all the time. So, and okay, this one, this is your digital system. So there are different ways to do this. I've seen people use um, digital equipment to work with this. I know that Mesa does make some digital equipment. Um, I do not know if it's step or direction, but it's the same premise as far as your diagram and wiring. I looked them up, they're all the same, at least for the most part. So it's the exact same thing, except you're working with digital code or, or digital inputs and outputs. So yeah. Pretty basic, pretty much the same. Uh, I did put breakout board here because I know Pico makes, I think it's Pico, I think that's how you pronounce it. They make a board, I've never worked with them, never used them, I don't know how to configure um, your software to work with it, so I'm not gonna speak on that. I just know that you know there are other breakout boards. All right, then we have the stepper motor. And here's why I don't advise people using a stepper motor unless it's like, you know, a, a, like a little grizzly machine or something like that. Um, there is no feedback. You, you get no positional feedback whatsoever. There's no encoders with just your, you know, vanilla stepper motors. You literally have a digital code coming out and then you're going to a breakout board or what have you. And then, you know, you're getting your DC power and then you're supplying that to the stepper, which I typo. Anyways, that's how that one works. Uh, pretty basic, nothing, you know, huge. So, and then we get into a more modern system. This is the most modern system there is. Um, these work on step and direction, usually like the, uh, the clear path server motors. These are actually how the clear path server motors work. So you have step and direction given to a servo slash stepper motor, and this is a closed loop system. So what that means is instead of the encoder communicating back to the breakout board, which then would communicate back to Linux, it kind of cuts, you know, it takes a, a, a different route. The encoder actually communicates to the servo driver slash stepper driver uh, because there are closed loop stepper motors out there. Um, they're a cheaper alternative. Sometimes they're called hybrid stepper motors because they're kind of, kind of sort of a mix. But anyways, the encoder talks directly to the servo driver slash stepper driver. And what this does is the servo driver slash stepper driver knows where it's supposed to be because the computer is telling it where it's supposed to be. And the servo driver will know where it's supposed to be, but the computer itself won't know where it's supposed to be. If that makes any sense. So the servo driver is responsible for where you are in space. The computer doesn't actually know. So here you have your input. Your encoder is going directly back into your servo driver. So, and usually these are like one phase servo drivers or two phase servo drivers, excuse me, as opposed to, you know, multiple phases. Um, incremental and absolute, that all, all that type of jazz. It's kind of a, a mess to get into. Anyways, this is an encoder video. This is a, 
you know, a basic wiring video for people who aren't 100% sure how this works. So there's no feedback that the computer actually gets whatsoever. So that's the downside to this system. The upside is it's cheaper sometimes, like the clear paths. Um, I'm pretty sure you can't get the I.O. out from the encoder to Linux. I could be totally wrong. Uh, so don't quote me on that. Don't don't say anything about that because I'm not 100% sure. Uh, I think on some of their server motors, you can do that. Also, when you're looking for a server motor in this type of a setup, it has to be a step and direction server motor. That has to be the digital output that it gets. Um, as far as I know, there's no other way to communicate to server drivers. Uh, I could be totally wrong. I, you know, I've started studying this. I'm not 100% sure on it. Don't take my word. This is just a diagram to show you how you could do it. All right, so the software side of Linux CNC. Now, there are two files that are probably the most important is your INI file and your HAL file. Uh, your HAL file is everything like your I.O. ports, you know, addressing the I.O. port to, you know, Axie A or, or Axie X or whatever. Um, or for your e-stop, you know, what, you know, port is for your e-stop, you know, that's your, uh, that's your IO stuff is right there. Then your INI file has to do with your display and things like that, your GUI, um, and then some other things like file paths and that type of a thing. You know, what, what file is your machine going to open up when you go to, uh, open up a file. What well, GUI is it going to display when you, you know, launch Linux CNC, that type of thing. So we're going to talk more about the INI file. The HAL file is pretty basic, but I figured I had to mention it. So without further ado, let's get into it. So um, how, an INI, how the INI file is broken down is they'll have in brackets what it is. So uh, display is what the machine, you know, is going to run. So default is Axie. I don't like Axie. Um, a lot of the industrial machines that I've run in the past look nothing like Axie. They look more like uh, Gmockerpy or something like that. Uh, G Screen's another one. Um, again, like I'm going to link below the INI file uh, or the INI page in the uh, the manual for Linux CNC. Um, read it up on it, study it, that type of thing. Um, but anyways, this is going to be your GUI itself, is this one right here, the display. Uh, the next thing you're going to need is probably your file directory for your program, which is this one right down here. Uh, default's okay, but what happens if you want a file on your desktop? It'd be easier to drop, you know, from a USB drive to that file. It'd be easier. You don't have to open up and then go through a file or two to find this one. It's just way easier to have, you know, on, on the desktop or something like that. And then you have your incremental. Now this is for your jog actually. You can change the distance of your incremental movements in this file. So say I want to move 75 thou, I can, you know, add a 75 thou or if I don't have enough spa space, I can replace this you know, 5,000 movement with a 75,000, you know, what have you. Or, you know, moving intents isn't really realistic in a, in a home shop machine. You know, you might not want that. Maybe it clutters up your display more than you'd like. Uh, you can totally remove that, and it would remove the button itself. So, anyways, moving right along. Oh, went too far. All right, so then you have to specify... And these aren't in order. There, there are ones that I'm skipping in this. These are just the most important uh, parts of the INI file. Uh, TRAG, this one specifies um, how many axes you have and um, specifies linear and degree as far as what, uh, what units are in. So, for instance, this is a fourth axis machine, so it has four axes down here. Now, say it was a lathe, it'd be two axes up here and then X and Z. So you'd skip the Y and you get rid of the Y and the A. It'd be an X and Z machine. If, for whatever reason, you want a, a, a real goofy lathe that has X and Y as their, as, you know, its default axes, uh, it won't allow you to do that. Uh, it will just error out because it's looking for Z in particular for a lathe. Um, 
And then, you know, what happens if you want a five axis machine? You can run a Linux CNC with a five axis machine. Um, I've never seen anybody do it personally. I know that there are provisions for it. Uh, you can't just put five up here and then uh, a B over here because um, it'd be X, Y, Z uh, for your, your, your traditional linear axes, then A, B, C for your rotary axes. Uh, you can't do that. There's some more math you need to go into. You need to really, really extensively edit the, uh, the files themselves to uh, accomplish that goal. All right, next I'm going to talk about the axes. Now, say you're running machine and you don't have money for ball screws, so you stick with linear or you stick with um, Acme thread screws. You can do that. Um, there is a backlash calculation. I don't have it set up in this one, but you can put backlash and then you know input how much backlash is in that particular particular Acme thread screw. I wouldn't do that. I'd keep with uh, ball screws if as much as possible. It's just uh, a better way of doing things. Uh, I give your home position, velocity, um, pitch of lead screws in here. I don't think I could fit it in. Um, how many steps? Um, how far you're moving every time you you take a step with the stepper motor? That type of a thing would be in here as well. Uh, any conversions between like pulleys or whatever, however you're driving it, that'd all be in here. Um, and again, I'm going to link below the uh, user manual for Linux CNC, the INI file itself, so you can access that. So anyways, that's all I got for this video. Just a quick overview of the INI file, a quick overview of hardware, how the hardware would work, you know, all that stuff. You know, it wasn't easy for me to find someone to tell me how to change the GUI. So I figured that, you know, these are little things that not everybody tells you that is really handy. You know, it's nice to know. It's nice to have in your back pocket. Um, it's just things that, you know, I wasn't told that I, I, I couldn't find or wasn't looking in the right places or didn't know what to look for. So it's, I figured I'd put it in video form of how to change the GUI, you know, that type of a thing. So, all right, that's all I got for this video. You know, thanks for watching if you managed to make it through this whole thing. So.